Hello, my name is Guy Thomas and I welcome you to this presentation about DANCE Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment Program. This program is one of the many DANCE safety initiatives we do. This presentation is also the first in a series of presentations about risk assessment and about emergency planning or how to make dive operations safer. I hope you enjoy this presentation and I will be back to you after this presentation with some more info and tips. Thank you for joining and enjoy. Let's start with the introduction to HIRA or Dance Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment Project and see what it can do for you and the diving community. We at DAN for over 30 years have been creating a culture of safety. You can look at us as an umbrella, but instead of protecting you from the rain, we protect you from accidents or any possible damage should an accident occur. We do this in many different ways. Our hotline provides medical assistance and services, which are of extreme importance once an accident happened. Our medical staff is 24-7 available to help all divers in case of need. Our RCAP program provides support and the risk mitigation project to hyperbaric chambers, especially those in remote locations. We also offer risk assessment and training opportunities to them, with the aim of increasing safety in these medical structures, where ultimately divers would need to get treated. Although most divers do not know, this is also a way we make sure that divers are in good hands when we refer patients to hyperbaric facilities. Another way of protecting divers is making sure they don't end up in a financial nightmare after the accident. To avoid this, we offer insurance packets to a certified insurance broker and insurance company. Then we offer educational services, this both to medical professionals as to divers from all kinds of levels. Also here, the aim is to make it possible for divers to get appropriate care as fast as possible. We also do risk mitigation through a series of safety resources and campaigns, which are available at the safety section of our website daneurope.org. And finally, we get to HIRA, our latest risk mitigation project. We will tell you more about this during this presentation. Let's take a step back and look for a moment what we want to achieve with our safety campaigns. As you know, diving safety is an important part of our mission. By offering special services, campaigns and resources, we increase diving safety and prevent accidents from happening. By educating divers to become safer divers, we are able to make diving safer. So let's talk about HIRA now, which is our worldwide safety project. So when you travel, how do you select your dive center? You could do this based on the destination. Let's say you want to go to Egypt or to Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt and you will look around which dive center you'll find there. Or you can look at the price. You want a price which is right for your budget. Or you select your dive center based on the distance from the hotel or from the type of diving you want to do. Wreck diving, technical diving, any kind of diving. But do you consider how safe they work? And if not, why not? Most probably, you would not have an idea to know if they are safe or not safe. How would you know? In fact, at the moment there is no clear identification showing if a dive center works in a safe way. So we just presume they all work safely. But we can do better. Why can't we show that a dive center is better or safer than another one? Most dive center owners or diving professionals did not receive any specialized training and risk assessment and are many times focused on the actual dives only. As a matter of fact, during dive instructor courses, we teach people how to take divers in a safe way into the water. But we only limit ourselves to what happens in or under the water. What about the fire risk in the premises? What about the classroom? If there is a fire, can I get out of the classroom? How about the electrical plugs in the wall? What about the shop area? Is it safe to work? And the emergency management? Do we have safety drills? Do we use standard operation procedures 
And do we have emergency action plan that we can use in case of an emergency? The Hira program helps owners, operators, staff and dive professionals identify hazards before they lead to injuries or losses. So what's it about? It's about generating awareness. And we do this by dividing Hira into three different levels. Hira level 1, 2 and level 3. Each of these levels are about educating dive centers and professionals to become safer. It's about risk mitigation. We require operators and professionals to use safe dive principles to perform risk assessment, to be ready for emergencies, to check their own accident management capabilities, and to have access to emergency services. There is a hire guide available that can help them and guide them through these procedures. Ultimately, we would like to have safe dive destinations. Destinations where we not only have safe dive operators, but also a good availability of medical facilities in hyperbaric chambers. So let's look at higher level 1. If you want to be certified for higher level 1, you will have to respect some requirements. These include BLS, first aid and auction trains, so you know how to act in case of an emergency. And of course, we also require you to have first aid kits and oxygen available. We will also require you to have a business or liability insurance and to use standard operational procedures such as pre-dive briefings, boat safety briefings and post-dive briefings using headcounts and checklists. We would also like you to have an emergency action plan for lost diver, dive injuries and even non-dive injuries. Let's take a look at procedures. Procedures can be standard operation procedures or could be emergency action plans. When we talk about standard operational procedures, we talk about written documents that explain how to organize or do specific tasks with the aim of creating a standardized and streamlined process. Here we would like to mitigate risk and avoid accidents from happening. Emergency action plans are also written documents, but they explain you how to act or react in an emergency. Here we mitigate the damage of potential events that could endanger people or an organization's ability to function safely. If you would like to know more about standard operational procedures or emergency action plans, we invite you to also look at the specific presentations. So why do we need procedures? But first of all, we need them to avoid confusion. We would like to, we would like that our staff knows how to act and does not improvise. We need to be prepared. We need to make sure we have the availability of the emergency materials and that our staff is trained to use them. We need them to protect clients, staff, facilities, assets and the environment. Scuba experiences are not without a risk. Remember that things could go wrong. And finally, you need them to have your liability list mitigated, to reduce exposure of business, to reinstatement, or to punitive actions. When it comes to higher level 2, we have some additional requirements. We would like you to have training in AED, neurological assessments, and hazardous marine life injuries. Material wise, we request you to have an AED available. We will also ask you to have an environmental sustainability plan. This is a plan that protects the environment. It shows your actions and the actions you want your divers to do to take care of nature. Furthermore, our standard operational procedures will now include also the maintenance of first aid kit and auction kits, a procedure about denial of service, and a procedure about how you organize emergency simulations and drills. Finally, for what concerns the emergency action plan, this will need to be based on your scope of activities. Dive operators such as dive centers, schools and clubs can also participate in higher level 3. Higher level 3 is not available for the individual diving professional. Here one needs to perform a full highway assessment in its complete dive operation. 
As with level 1 and level 2, it's a self-assessment. But there is a hire guide available that can help you and will guide you through this process. In this guide, we divide the dive operation into different areas. And for each area, we identify the possible risks and explain you how to mitigate them. The assessment you will need to do will be based on your scope of operation and available services, which will not be an easy task, but will make it possible for you to assess your full dive operation and increase diving safety and emergency planning as never before. Those who get to this level can request the level 3 certification. Performing risk assessment and writing procedures and emergency plans require experience and dedication. We therefore recommend the dive operators to work with a dedicated diving safety officer. A diving safety officer is especially important for higher level 3. It is an experienced person able to perform risk assessments who could use the DAN risk assessment guide to be able to perform these tasks. This person should be employed by the dive center. It could be internal staff or an external collaborator. And he does not only need to perform a risk assessment, but he will also need to compile all needed documents such as standard operation procedures and emergency action plans. Then also develops a specific diving safety operator course. This course is only open on invitation and only for very experienced diving professionals. Here you will have an overview of some of the subjects we will handle during the course. Risk assessment and mitigation, noise ergonomics, lightning ergonomics, fire safety awareness, compressed air for scuba diving, oxygen cleaning, lubricants and sealants, gas compressors, regulators, diving medicine lectures, ecological aspects, recompression chambers, sustainable business planning, occupational health and safety, safety improvement programs, emergency action plan, how to compile a safety manual, how to perform a hire, and of course, there will be practical on-site assessments. The course is be taught over a period of seven days. We also have a group of diving safety advisors available. This is a selected internal group who could assist you with any problem you might encounter during your risk assessment or when compiling the needed documents. They can also provide you guidance by email and telephone. This group of people will be able to help you providing all kinds of technical info. They could assist you and you could even ask them to collaborate on on-site assessments. So how do we participate in HIRA? For higher level 1 and 2, there is an online questionnaire. As mentioned before, it is a self-assessment procedure. Answers will be checked to see if the minimum requirements as declared are met. If OK, participants will receive an email with a certificate of participation and an invitation to participate in the next level. Level 1 and 2 is free for members and business partners. Level 3, which also is free for members and business partners, will be based on the higher guide. You could require the DSA assistance, but we recommend you to work with a dedicated diving safety officer. And this brings us almost at the end of the presentation. You might have questions. In that case, just send us an email at hira at daneurope.org. Remember, wherever you are, or whatever you wear, Dan is there. Safety is everywhere, also where you might not expect it. Thanks for watching this presentation, and I hope you now have a clear understanding of what Hira is and can do for you. If you would like to participate in the project, please go to the safety pages of our website daneurope.org where you can find all information about the program and the possibility to participate. If you participate and you'll be certified as a higher level 1, higher level 2 or even higher level 3 participant, your name will be listed on our website. And remember that this presentation was only the first in a series of higher representations. The next presentations will be more practical and will be about standard operational procedures, emergency action plans, and environmental sustainability plan.
I hope to see you again in the next presentations. And for now, be safe and take care.